गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टूडे इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस अनदर न्यू ट्रांसफॉर्म नेमली द रेड ऑन ट्रांसफॉर्म सो फार आई हैव वी हैव सीन दैट एंड वी हैव डेवलप्ड एंड डिस्क्राइब्ड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्म्स आइदर ऑन द रियल एक्सिस और ऑन द कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन और ऑन द इमेजनरी एक्सिस और मेनली ऑन द वेल नोन कार्टिजियन कॉर्डिनेट्स और पोलर कॉर्डिनेट्स और सिलिंड्रिकल कॉर्डिनेट्स राइट सो वॉट हैपन्स इफ वी वर टू डिस्क्राइब अ ट्रांसफॉर्म इन ए आर्बिट्री मैनीफोल्ड और ए प्लेन दैट वी डू नॉट नो वेयर इज द ओरिएंटेशन और वी हैव अ रैंडम और नोन और अ स्पेसिफाइड यू नो ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ दैट प्लेन सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज कैन वी गो अहेड एंड डिस्क्राइब ए ट्रांसफॉर्म for a arbitrary manifold or an arbitrary hyperplane so to describe such a transform i am going to start the basic background so so to to begin with let me just highlight some of the major you know the major achievements here so radon transforms before i start defining radon transforms let me just you know come back and describe a bit more about these transforms because these are a little special in the sense that the application of radon transforms preceded the development of the transform it was because that in in uh, 19 early 1900s an x ray machine was developed and it was not known how to take images and how to use those images for a, an arbitrary hyperplane so it was only after the development of these radon transforms that those Im that information or data from those images at those or at those hyperplanes were suitably developed so let me just mention some of the the major landmarks in the development of radon transform so the first landmark in the development of radon transform was in 1917 with where it where the first paper by john radon was published on determinants well that i for students who are curious i am going to write down even the topic of the paper on determination on determination of functions of functions from integrals along certain along certain manifolds okay so it was this fun, this uh, this phenomenal paper through which john redon discovered the the uh, fundamental redon transforms now it was not known what is the use of this redon transform until until another well from 1917 there was lots of you know uh, little applications including applications in in tomography so so in all these areas these particular areas in tomography in x ray scans the equipments were being developed said the x ray scanning machines the computational tomography machines and the ct scan machines the cat scans but it was not known how to use and post process the images that were developed by these machines so by the way the cat scans have wide ranging applications in the area of medical imaging so although the machines were developed it was not known how to process those images developed by these machines so it was only so it was all from 1940s from 1940s to 1960s that these machines were being developed but there was no proper usage of the data that was generated by these machines it was only until 1979 that that you know two scientists by the name of cormack cormack and honsfield so these two scientists cormack and honsfield they were the first people who were able to develop an x ray machine that successfully used the concept of radon transform that successfully used x ray machine that used the radon transform to process the images that were developed by these machines so due to their work 
they received the Nobel Prize. So it was their, it was their phenomenal work and notice that it was only after the successful usage of this radon transform that these people were able to you know come up with a significant you know uh, you know career defining you know machine through which they were able to process the x ray data so the the importance of radon transform cannot be underestimated cannot be underestimated because of this following landmark development so let me just start with the definition of radon transform So let me say that I am I am working. Let me show you the the picture in 2D because that is my point. That is my plane of drawing. But students who have a bit of creativity can go to any n-dimensional uh, n-dimensional hyperplane. But the two-dimensional version is that we have a line. So let me say that I denote my line by L. So let me call this as my x-axis and my y-axis. So I am working in the Cartesian frame and I have a line. So now a line is going to be described by two quantities. One is the distance of the line from, from the origin. So let me call this as P. So the line L is described by P comma the angle that this perpendicular makes with the x axis. So it is called P comma let me denote it by phi. So as we see that the orientation of the line will change this angle phi and the distance from the origin will change this quantity p. So any line in 2D can be described by these two quantities L comma phi. Similarly, I can describe my any planes by these two quantities p and phi. So, so my L is in this case it is a line, it is a line in R2. Okay? And let me call an arc, an arc an arc element by ds so ds is an arc element on on the line l okay and i see that my quantity p is a length it's a length which is length which is perpendicular from from origin it is the length which is perpendicular from the origin to L and, and this I take it as a scalar. So essentially P is the total distance of this line from the origin. Okay, and then I have this angle phi, the phi is the angle that the perpendicular makes with the positive axis, the positive x axis. Okay. So I can see that my two quantities p and phi they completely define my line, and ds is an arc length along s. So if I move along along the line, that will be my my variable s <coughs> with an element arc length ds. Which means now with all these definitions, I am ready to define my radon transform. So let me call my radon transform. I denote it with a curly r. My radon transform of the function. Remember this is now for a 2D function. I denote it also as f hat of p comma phi. So in the transformed plane, my function now is going to be projected. Any function is now going to be projected on this line, which is described by these two quantities p and phi. So my radon transform is the following integral. It is the projection of the function f of x comma y on the line. Okay? So, the, so we can easily see that this, ex, this sort of a definition can be extended to any to a line in any dimension, namely a hyperplane. So, especially suppose if I have a data or an image which is described in n dimensions and we want to check the and extract information in any particular plane, I can always project that data in that particular plane by taking the radon transform. So radon transforms are specially useful if you were to project some you know data which is not meaningful to uh, to another plane so that the data can get meaningful so so hence the use usefulness of radon transform so so notice that i am going to choose my line l so my line l so my line l is of course defined by 
l of p comma phi. So now, so instead of working with x y in my transformed plane, I am working with quantities p and phi. So which means that in the Cartesian frame, I had two quantities, independent quantities x and y. Now similarly in the radon transformed plane, I must have two quantities. Well, one of course is the angle, the other is p. So I am going to choose two similar quantities. So p is a length and then of course I choose another length s which is perpendicular to p. Similar to the fact that we had x and y axis which were perpendicular to each other. So, so which means we are going to do the following. So if I have that we, so if we rotate, if we rotate the coordinate system, if we rotate the coordinate system by an angle phi and and label and label the new axis, label the new axis by p and s. So, p is the distance from the origin to the l, the perpendicular distance and s of course is along the line. So, s and p are perpendicular to each other. So, if we rotate by, by our axis, my x and y axis here by an angle phi, I see that I have defined my new coordinate system. So, my new coordinate system is as follows. I can rewrite my old coordinate system x and y in terms of p and s. So, my x is p cos phi minus s, s times sin phi and y is p sin phi plus s cos phi. Okay. So, moving ahead, let me just rewrite, let me call this as my definition 1. So, I am going to rewrite 1. So, 1, so my 1 is as follows. I have the radon transform of f of x comma y. So, this is also equal to the radon transform which is a projection over the line and this is nothing but the integration with respect to the vector s of the function p cos phi minus s sin phi comma p sin phi plus s cos phi. Okay. So, this is my new radon transform in terms of the variable p, s and phi and the integration element is ds. So, I am going to left. So, s is along the line. So, let me draw that figure again. So, I have a p here, it makes an angle phi and s goes from, from negative, from infinity to negative infinity. So, my integral will be from negative infinity to infinity ds. Okay. So, then, so I am going to extend this particular definition in 2D into a definition in Nd. So, in particular, I am going to describe my radon transform in a, on a hyperplane. So, let me just show you the, the generalized definition. So, let us denote two new vectors. So, in, in higher dimensions, in higher dimensions, let me introduce, let me introduce unit vectors. In higher dimensions, let me introduce unit vectors as u bar equal to cos phi sin phi. Notice that, notice that this new vector is a unit vector. This is a unit vector along, along p, along p. So, I described my, my u. Let me just again redraw this figure that I have shown here above in a slightly, you know, in a neat way. So, I have p and this makes an angle phi and I have x here sorry, I have y here and I have x and my s variable is along the line. I define my u to be perpendicular to the line l. So, my u vector is along this direction okay. and of course, my u perpendicular, my u perpendicular will be, will be along this direction. So, I define my u perpendicular as follows. My u perpendicular is negative sin phi comma cos phi. 
So, the second vector the also a unit vector is along along the direction s. Okay? So, we see that one of the vector is along the direction p and the second one is along the direction of the line which is along s. Okay? So, this is along along the line along the line l and this is perpendicular to the line l. Okay. So, then let me just denote the equation of the line. So, now my vector x, my vector x in the Cartesian frame also given by x y in, in 2 D. So, I am while I develop the definition of the Redon transform in higher dimensions, I am going to verify that, that uh, definition in two dimensions. So, in two dimensions my vector given by x y can also be written in terms of r theta is along p the, the magnitude is p times u plus s times u perpendicular. Okay? So, this is my general vector in 2 D. So, p times u plus s times u perpendicular. So, so along the line along, along line l I have that I am given that p is let us look at this from this expression let me call this as as 1. Notice that from 1 if I were to take the dot product of this vector x with u I get p. So, my p is x dot with u. So, that is my so along the line the equation of the line is p is equal to x dot u. Now, we could extend this definition of u in n dimensions. So, my individual components of u will be the direction cosines and in that case this let us say denoted by 2, my 2 will denote a hyperplane. So, this in general is a hyperplane in n dimensions, hyperplane in n dimensions. Okay? So, we can work practically work in any dimensions that we want given this definition of hyperplane. So, let me continue my discussion on the development of this Redon transform. So, my Redon transform f hat of p comma phi this is integral negative infinity to infinity f of p of u plus s of u perpendicular bar right d s. So, I see that now my integral is with respect to x notice that I can always rewrite this functional form using the definition of delta function which means that I want to project this function on this hyperplane. So, which means that only those values of p are allowed such that p is x dot u. So, let me just rewrite this expression. So, f of this, this argument can be written as f of all those values in the Cartesian frame such that the following delta function satisfies. So, this becomes delta of p minus x dot u dx okay? and this is integral from minus infinity to infinity. So, that is my, my we see that that is the most general definition of Redon transform over a hyperplane de defined using this delta function. Okay? So, now there is one property a useful property I want you to see that the Redon transform of minus p comma phi that is what happens if we go below below the origin. So, let me again redraw the figure that I had. So, this was x, this was y and my p my positive u bar direction is along the line per perpendicular to the line. What happens if we go the other way? Right? So, negative u. So, in that case my, my Redon transform so, this is my phi and now my new angle will be my new angle will be this the phi. So, my, my new Redon transform is the same as my original one with p minus p replaced by p, but angle phi replaced by phi plus pi. Okay? So, which means I can work with my Redon transform in the positive quadrant with angle phi replaced by phi plus pi. So, I do not have to worry about the negative values of p in my definition of Redon transform. Okay, so, I am going to restrict I am going to restrict my phi from 
0 to pi because all the negative values of the radon transform are covered in this outer range of this angle. Okay. So, moving on, let me just show you some examples. So, what I have is show that well show that the radon transform of the exponential of negative a square x square plus y square is equal to the following quantity. So, this is also equal to square root pi divided by a e to the power negative a square p square. So, I am given that a is positive. Okay. So, we see that I have to evaluate the radon transform in two dimensions. So, let us proceed let us find the, the radon transform using the definition. So, this will be integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the power negative a square x square plus y square right. And now notice that my, my radon variables my transformed variables are p and phi. So, I know that x I had the relation for x, x was p cos phi plus s sin phi and similarly y was in terms of p and s. So, if I were to evaluate x square plus y square, I can see that x square plus y square is nothing but p square plus s square. So, using the relation between x and y and p and s, I can readily change this integral into the integral in p and s. So, this becomes s square plus p square times ds. Okay. So, let us evaluate let me call this as 1. So, my expression 1 is the integral. So, it becomes the integral. Now, notice that I am integrating with respect to s ds. So, with which means for this element my e my quantity p becomes an independent variable with respect to s as the integration variable. So, I can pull out my expression a e to the power negative a p square. So, let me rewrite this e to the power negative a p square integral negative infinity to infinity and I am left with e to the power negative a s square d s. Okay. So, the original expression had an a square. So, I have an a square here and an a square here as well. Now, this particular integral can be readily evaluated. This is a standard calculus integral please substitute y equal to a s and see that this integral is a standard integral. And let me write down the answer after evaluating this standard integral. I see that this is square root of pi by a e to the power negative a square p square. Okay. So, so, so that brings us to, so that is the answer that we were searching. So, then let us look at, let us look at the case another case. So, I am given I am and I am asked to find the radon transform of the following expression. So, find the radon transform of the function x times e to the power negative a times x square plus y square. I see that this is let me say that this is for I have to evaluate it for a positive. Okay. So, so let us move ahead. So, I have to find I have to find the radon transform of let me rewrite this expression e to the x times e to the power a x square plus y square and let, let me now write down the integral. So, the radon integral is integral now I am going to replace the expression of x and y with, with uh, respect to s and p. So, my s my x is p cos phi minus s sin phi. Okay. So, there is a minus sign here. So, from negative infinity to infinity this is an integral with respect to the element s e to the power negative a p square plus s square d s. So, x square plus y square is p square plus s square. Now, notice that since this integral is with respect to s let us now break this integral into two halves. 
integral negative infinity to infinity p cos phi e to the power negative a p square. So, I can take one factor out. So, I get that the first integral is is e to the power negative a p square times times p cos phi times integral negative infinity to infinity e to the power negative a s square d s. The second integral is minus integral negative infinity to infinity. Let me just uh, take out the, the constants with respect to the integration variable. So, I have sin phi times e to the power negative a p square. So, e to the power negative a p square times s times e to the power negative a s square d s. Notice that this particular integral the second one is an odd integral. So, this is an odd integral and over this range of integration this is going to give me 0. So, which means I have to only evaluate the first integral and I get my answer as. So, let me write down all the terms outside the integral. I get that this is equal to p cos phi e to the power negative a p square times square root pi by a. So, that gives me well I have already used my calculus results to evaluate the value of this infinite integral. So, please substitute y is equal to uh, square root a s and change it into a, a one of the standard integrals. Okay. So, so that that gives me that gives me the answer that I was searching. Okay, let us move ahead. 